Hey folks, uh, today I'm going to have a look at the toggle switches in Verbal Equipment. So uh, there are two types of toggle switches on the Verbal Equipment uh, at this moment in time. There are the three-way toggle switches, which basically have a neutral central position, uh, which is it's spring-loaded to return there. And there's a forward position, which presses one button, and a back position, which presses a different button. And then when you take your finger off it, it goes to the middle, neutral position, and nothing's pressed. The other type is the two-way toggles. Now, by default, the default configuration, um, it actually operates as a two-way toggle. That's how it's configured. It's configured as a switch. Now, not many games can take advantage of this. DCS is one, but you do have to go in and edit Lua configuration files for individual aircraft to get it to work in the correct manner. And to be frank with you, I can't be bothered doing that. But let's have a look at how it operates out of the box. So I'm selecting my throttle, load. To load the configuration from the actual physical device into this software. So I'm going to be looking at T1 and T2. These are my toggle switches. So if I move the toggle forward and backward, you can see it flicks between these two physical buttons. Now the physical buttons um, go into this mapping table and then these logical buttons is what Windows gets sent. So if I scroll down, uh, there it is there. So what's going to happen is when this switch gets flicked between its forward and back position, it's going to send output to button 32. So if I show you in VPT Joy Tester, Button 52 is the rotary, by the way, so it will be flicking between these different uh, settings. So if I flick it, that's forward. You see a pulse and another pulse when it goes back. So forward, backward generates wee pulses. And like I say, certain software games, for example, can, you know, with some adjustments like DCS, uh, interpret that correctly. So that's how it works out of the box. There are two potential different ways you can do this. I'll just show you method one. This is the one that I started with a long time ago and then decided it wasn't that useful. So if I go to my mapping table here, we're going to go 28. We're going to set it to normal and save. And then we're going to go down to the bottom, find the first free one, which in this case is 58. And then we're going to put 29 in there and set it as normal and then save and then save to the device. So that sends a config to the device. The device will reset itself, load the new config and then operate using the new method we've just sent down. Okay, so we're back in the button tab. And if we flick the switch forward and backward, you can now see that nothing's changed here. So if we go to the joy tester, select our throttle, this time it's different. So when it's in the back position, logical 32 is permanently held active. And in the forward position, the new binding we created is 58. So these will be held down permanently depending on position you're in. So that's, that's one way of doing it. And I found that this wasn't exactly great, especially if you're using, um, like I do, joystick gremlin because it'll be permanently sending an input to the device. Or sorry, the device will be permanently send input into joystick gremlin at one or more of these buttons uh, will be lit permanently. So the method that I use is the toggle one. So if I go back here, change this to toggle on. Go to our new mapping which we created and set its mode to toggle on and then save. As before, nothing's changing on the physical side, just flicking them backward and forward, just changes those. Now, if we go to the VPC Joy Tester. Now, right now, it's sitting in the forward position and there's no output at all from the device. If I flick it down, it pulsed briefly on 32. 
for a very short period of time. And then if you push it forward, it sends a pulse to 58 logical, but only a pulse, so it's not permanently held down. So basically this gets picked up whenever it changes state. And this is the mode that I currently use at the moment. Um, there are disadvantages, as with everything in life. Um, disadvantages is it only sends a pulse on like a, a state change between the two of them. So if you start off in an aircraft, um, say for example you've bound this to flaps or something like that, you have to make sure that it's in the right physical position. Or you can just quickly toggle forward and backward. You know, it's it's up to you. But when, once once you do that once, you take off, you're flying around, then it, your controls would ex will match with it. So, for example, if the up position or forward position was flaps up and the, the back or down position was flaps down command for a specific flight sim or something, then that makes it really handy. Um, is I find that this way you can get a wee bit more use out of the... Um, the two-way toggles. Um, personally speaking, myself at the moment, I use it for flaps on a couple of different aircraft, and for the Mi8, I use it to trigger a macro that switches all the lights on and the searchlights on the underneath the aircraft, and the back position switches them all off. So uh, this might make it a wee bit more useful for you. Um, see how you go, and hope this helps.